This video is sponsored by Mississippi Land Bank. Visit them online at mslandbank.com. This is your place. Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. Let's take a look at Will Rogers. He's the Mississippi State quarterback who took over last season for the Bulldogs a few games into the year. He started the last six games, and you gotta remember, he was a true freshman in this COVID year without spring and all that kind of stuff. So the context, when you look at the year that Will Rogers had last year, is really important, I think. Let's take a look. You you feel a different rhythm to this offense when Rogers begin to play more, and that's what Mike Leach saw. There's a sense of timing about this young man. Now, the first thing you have to remember is that he was forced to play. State went out and got KJ Costello as the transfer out of Stanford who lit it up against LSU, but that was an anomaly. They didn't come into the year planning to play Will Rogers, a true freshman with no you know, spring, an odd summer, uh, very few practices, and Will was sick early in the year. You had to remember that he missed two weeks before he even got out there. So he was forced to play earlier than they thought you know, they were going to have to play him. All right, let's watch this play fade up top. Catch, flip, throw. No wasted motion, and that's why the timing works out is because of that. Um, I'll just show you here again. You're up, and you're trying to beat this guy to the outside, but even if he beats him, if the throw is late, uh, it doesn't matter. Now, this is what I like. Let's watch here. You're paying attention to the mechanics of Will Rogers. He's going to flip those hips around and waste no time. All right, so catch, eyes go there. He sees, all right, he's got outside position. You're not really be able to see the receiver up top. You can only see his feet. But look, watch uh, the mechanics of the quarterback. Catch, eyes where they go, and throw off that back foot. If you see what I'm saying here, like he's not setting up here and then, and then giving it like, you know, one little hitch and then getting the ball out. He's right now, that, that back foot right now is planted and he's fixing to drive off of that. And that's what gets the ball out there quick enough to you know, throw this touchdown. And then it's gotta be accurate. So he's getting the ball. If you look where the ball is snapped, the ball's sitting here, need a yard for a first down. It's sitting here on the six. Your receiver is one yard off. And so let's look at the timing. If he's at the seven on the snap of the ball, by the time the quarterback gets the ball out, he's three yards in front. So the ball is coming out, and the receiver has moved from here at the seven to the four. That's three yards. He's only made three or three steps. I've already got him beat. And if you look, this ball is already coming out, and he's putting it on that spot in the very back of the end zone. And they rep this a lot, and that's why they're able to, you know, come up with the timing. That's a really nice throw and location. You know, then you've got all you've got him beat. That's the other thing about it. You got him beat, so there's plenty of room. Did they give us another look from behind? Yeah. You see all that room out here that he's sort of uh, using. Uh, I mean, all this space. If I put that ball out here somewhere catchable for him, he's got the DB beat, and so um, able to make the play. Last year, overall, he was played in what is it, eight of the games. But he started six of them, okay? So he started the last six games. And if you look at just those starts, right? Just the games that he started in. You're talking Vanderbilt, back-to-back -back road games, Georgia, and then Ole Miss, and then Auburn, Missouri, and Tulsa, the bowl game. In those six games that he started, he goes 1,566 yards, that's 261 a game through 10 touchdowns and three picks. So once he took over, he was very efficient. Watching this Cobra, all right? In other words, you know, cat corner, Cobra, it's into the boundary. That's uh, a corner blitz. That's effectively what that means, is this corner's lining up like he's covering receiver, but he's actually gonna come. And when I say into the boundary, the ball is on the left hash, so the nearest sideline is over here to the left. That's into the sideline or into the boundary. So let's watch the play first. On the snap, here he comes. Quarterback sees it right away, and now you got what you want. If you look, there's a pre-snap deal involved in this. This is what's impressive to me is you're talking about a true freshman quarterback playing on the road at Georgia who's got top five talent for sure. And, you know, he's game-planned and knows we may see this. Certain things are called. We may see 
corner blitz into the boundary, and that's what they get. You see his eyes right there too? Again, that's why I say there's some pre-snap involved is because he's already thinking about, I'm going to read this side based on numbers. What I mean by that is if you look, You've got next level defenders three to a three receiver side, and who knows what's on top. Television's not showing you the rest of it. But the other thing is you've got linebackers walked into gaps, okay, both on your right to the wide side of the field as well. So in terms of numbers, you've got one next level defender. It's that corner in here to this short side and potentially two receivers, which includes the back. So there's a little bit of an out number, and that's why pre-snap's going to take him there. I like what he's doing. So pre-snap takes you left. Now you've seen it. And this is the other thing you like about it. There's no hesitation. I mean, he's coming. There's no question about it. And this quarterback has seen it already, and the ball is coming out right now to the back. The decision also. Okay, so you got a couple of options right here. You raise up and try to throw it through him. It brings him into play because of his angle. But right now, we're just going to get it to a guy who, you know, the reason we signed a running back is because he's good with the ball in his hands. So I'm going to give it to him right now and make a play. So you beat the corner blitz, you get a block by the receiver. You beat the corner blitz by reading it. Another thing is I noticed going out to practices early on that he had really good mechanics, maybe the best just sort of natural I guess you could say mechanics of any of the quarterbacks. His throwing motion was really tight um, compared to KJ Costello, who was a little bit of a wind-up, great arm, but a little bit of a wind-up guy. Uh, you watch Will Rogers, the ball's high and tight, comes out of his ear. You could tell he's been really coached. And he had a little bit quicker feet um, in the pocket, moving around, a little better athlete, frankly, than KJ Costello. And you could see that early on. It's just that in practice, you're looking at a guy who was, you know, 18 years old playing in high school football the year before. And that's the thing that jumps out at me also. So in four of the six games that he started, he didn't throw any interceptions. And he threw no interceptions on the road. Okay, this is the uh, first possession, first offensive drive versus George. And what I thought we would do is maybe just take a look at some things in these drives without uh, breaking every play down, you know, step for step. This is uh, first possession, 0-0 zero, zero game. And this is one of those underneath deals versus zone you're talking about. You can watch linebackers drop and Georgia three down linemen. You've only, you know, got three. It's as effectively nickel, so – you know, six in a box, but three of them already removed. And uh, on the snap, you get what you get, and that is uh, dropping linebackers. And the underneath is there. So early on, it's take this completion, uh, get what you get. You know, you're making six, seven yards on that first play, but take your completion, get what you get, force them to come up and tackle. They've seen it on film, know you're going to do it. You have to be able to do it. More of the underneath zone stuff, and this is crossing route in the middle of the field over the football. That term, for those that don't know what I mean by that, is ball is on this left hash. And if you look right in here, right on top of where the ball is snapped, right over it, is where the completion and the crossing route is happening underneath. Again, dropping linebackers. They are only rushing three. You look at the linebackers dropping. They're going to cross. If it's man-to-man, -man, they're going to keep running. If it's not, they're going to stop. So you just get it to him, get the completion for a first down. And with Georgia's giving you the first down, you know, a lot of teams do this against this offense because you can see you only need four yards for the first down, and they are willing to give it to you. So you take that first down, completion, another one, get what you can get. It turns into almost 10. Uh, come back later, and this is where you find a little deeper – cut in their zone coverage this time they give you a different look they're rushing four they line up six on the line of scrimmage i don't know if you can see that those six are three down linemen you see those helmets there but if you look here are all three linebackers stepped up into gaps as well giving you a pressure look the only thing is i think pre-snap freshman quarterback sees there's a lot of cushion there's other defenders back this is not a zero coverage look so somebody's probably going to drop out of that even though they're trying to show you a pressure look so then on the snap one comes but the other two drop 
His eyes are in the right place, and I think he, you know, sees I've only got a four-man rush. While he's taken off here, he's uh, the slot receiver into the short side of the field that's going to find that opening in their zone in the middle of the field, and uh, you make a play out of it. Got behind a linebacker. He's fitting it in. Now, if you look, let me let this play so you can see it. If you look, there's a defender trailing him, and that's actually one of those linebackers that initially lined up a line of scrimmage who has turned just the underneath. There again, you see the linebacker turn. That's what I was talking about. You can kind of see how you're working against zone coverage. Again, zone means this defender right here doesn't have a man that he is covering per se. He's really going to cover an area of the field, and his first thing that he's doing is looking up that nearest receiver, right? And that's Wally in the slot. And then as the play goes on, look at the linebacker. See, he's dropping in the zone. If somebody, if a route, a running back, or a crosser, somebody had come underneath this linebacker in his face, you know, he's probably going to jump it. But since nobody does, what he's going to do, and he actually does a really nice job, is turn and try to run step for step with Wally to close him off since there's nobody underneath him. When he does that, that's actually a pretty good job. He doesn't turn. He just uh, floats and then tries to get underneath it. But that gives you an idea how close he is right here. That gives you an idea of the window that Will Rogers is fitting this thing into with a defender on the backside coming over and then one on the trail side. So defender here, defender here, the ball has to be in this window at the right time. And that's what I'm talking about. Timing versus zone coverage is so important. So it's a really nice play. He is the first passer in program history to have three consecutive games with 30-plus completions. He's the first Mississippi State freshman to have multiple 300-yard passing games. A lot of that's the offense, but you still have to go out and do it. And then those 45 completions against Ole Miss were second in SEC history. All right, here's some more stuff in this game. Uh, three plays, one, two, three against Georgia, where State took the lead with a touchdown. The first one is against zone, and I love this because he uses – a little bit of a shoulder pump to open the throwing lane. It'll take me a little longer to show you these three plays in a row, but I hope you'll hang in there with it. So pre-snap, safeties are back deep, right back here, which gives you a zone look, all right? There's nobody on the line of scrimmage. Well, four down, three down, and one linebacker walked in there is, is, is effectively that guy's got his hand up. The other three have their hand down, but only four on the line of scrimmage. It's a zone look pre-snap. That's what I'm trying to point out right here. Okay, so on the snap, watch quarterback, watch Will Rogers. His eyes immediately go to the outside. Um, he is looking out here to, you know, try and influence somebody. Like, I'm looking out here. Okay, and then it's not just looking to throw a route either. It's looking to um, influence somebody to move them because I think he already knows what I'm getting is, Outside release, nudge by Wally back to the inside because I got two deep safeties. There's room in the middle of the field right here. It's a 10-10 game. It's time to start taking a shot or two, and I think that's what you're getting. So there's a the little shoulder fake, all right? See him right there? Pump that outside hitch. Corner's dropping. It's going back to like a three look. Either that or it's just four, dropping eight and putting four deep but um, and trying to go underneath with that inside defender. But when he pumps, I want you to watch these defenders right here. Okay, so you got one that's looking at the quarterback. He's going to nudge outside. Another's going to run right there. And I think that little nudge helps to get Wally open. Uh, Wally is right here. Okay, so he's going to turn back to the inside. Watch him. One little nudge from the quarterback. And out goes the defender. See that underneath Wally? One little pump fake, shoulder fake, gets that defender going forward. Again, I'll do it one more time. Just watch this area. Wally's coming behind him. That defender in the black shirt right there, watch him as I wind this back and forth. Okay, he's reacting to the shoulder fake of the QB. Shoulder fake, and now defender goes out. And when he does that, Defender is reacting to the underneath route and the shoulder fake to it. Wally's going to come open right here, and quarterback's going to drill that thing in there for a completion. 
And it's because he's manipulating a defender, making him go to this guy to give me more room for my throwing lane. That's a veteran play by a true freshman quarterback. Zips it in there for a completion. They come back again on the same drive. Three-man rush, go zone again. You know, you're, you're sort of, again, taking what they give you, but to a three-man side, they're going to drop. They give you that underneath defender. Uh, I mean, they give you that underneath receiver right there with a couple of hitches. We take it force them to come up and tackle, and now you got them thinking, well, we've got to play some man-to-man coverage somewhere. And so they're going to come out here on this particular play and try their best to play some man while disguising it. Austin Williams, the slot receiver to the left, is going to motion across. Nobody runs with him step for step. That George is actually doing a good job of disguising this. You see that? Defensively, when he goes in motion, everybody just kind of stays where they are except for one defender drops back. But the plan all along for them is they got one guy, Jaden Wally, who's beating us right now. We got to lock him up and play some man. They've disguised it pretty well on this play. On the snap, he's up the line of scrimmage. I'm sorry, he's up the hash, not line of scrimmage. Safeties are on top, but you're playing some man-to-man responsibilities underneath. They have jumped into it. Man-to-man responsibility here, here. This defender is chasing the back. Man-to-man right here, locking him up, right? And this third receiver is actually his responsibility is the safety on top out of the screen. And here's how I know that. When he runs this off and gets to the middle of the field, that safety is nowhere to be found. And what it has done has singled up that defender on Jaden Wally one-on-one. They finally got that man-to-man opportunity they've been looking for in this ballgame. And the key is, can you hit it? And he does. Not only does he hit it, the accuracy of of completing this as he's running with him man-to-man. If this ball is inaccurate and left inside the defender is going to break it up or you know or knock it away uh, knock it away or pick it off if you you know throw it too far you lead him out of bounds it's incomplete but if this ball is perfect which it is that's when you get catch and run against man to man and that's what he did he put it right on him perfectly and a receiver is able to catch it and run away from the defender the thing is too he was good in high school in his career in high school 9,093 passing yards, 79 touchdown passes. You look at his senior year, too, the touchdown interception was incredible. Uh, his senior year at Brandon, he goes for 3,500 yards, 38 TDs, only three interceptions. And the thing is, he was that way throughout his career at Brandon. He was really productive and did not make mistakes. More example of that, the importance of accuracy versus man-to-man coverage. And... Um, so it's, it's more of the same from Will Rogers, a true freshman who I thought played really well and it kind of flew under the radar uh, last year. Let's watch the play first, and then I'll come back and, and show you. They motion Wally across and run with him man-to-man. You hit him underneath and you turn it up for a big play. And we'll come back and finish the play in just a sec. But here's what's working on this. It's a couple of things about it, okay? First is pre-snap, Will Rogers looks up and he sees two safeties in the middle of the field which typically is a zone type of look, meaning, you know, if those safeties are back there, one's playing deep zone, another's playing deep zone, there's going to be zone underneath, and that's what they've seen all year long, but Missouri is trying to disguise something. They walk two guys up in the line, three with their hands down, walk two up, that's five on a line of scrimmage. Six, if you count this, but in terms of their coverage, they can't really send him unless they blitz him off the edge and drop this defender down to take Austin Williams, right? So that's how this is going to work. But they help the freshman QB in this situation by giving him a little motion. Most times, now I know we saw it against Georgia, but most times if you motion a guy, if there's man-to-man coverage, his defender will run with him. Not always, but most of the time. And in this case, you motion him, and here he goes with him. Enough pre to know, yeah, okay, they're jumping in some man-to-man coverage right here. And that's what he gets. Um, so you run it. Then on the snap, they're only bringing four. And what I like about that, I'm trying to guess his eyes right here. If you look, Will Rogers is not looking up the field. I think he's looking in here to see, did both of those guys come or not? Now, he's got five-man protection, maybe six if the back stays in there. But I still think he's trying to look over here to this side to see, is somebody – 
hot? And what is the blitz or, or what is the pressure right here? Well, all they bring is four with a twist. So the linebacker is going to go outside. He walk in the gap. Defensive end twisting back around inside. You just trust your protection against this. So it's not, even though they're jumping in man responsibilities, it's not an all-out blitz of any kind. Here goes Wally across. The other thing that's happening is you got a defender trying to get down underneath and this safety trying to rotate back to the middle of the field. So it's going to be a man-to-man -man underneath with a free safety on top. Man free. Cover one, as some people like to call it. So you get the man. He reads it. He sees, all right, initially they bring four. When the running back stays in, here's the other thing that's happening. The running back stays in in protection. This linebacker has that running back in a man-to-man -man responsibility. So as soon as he sees him stay in protection, now this backer's coming as well, uh, knowing that, hey, I got to come, my guy's staying in in protection. That's another thing happening right here. So there's your crosser. Reads it. What I like is he understands protection. They've only got uh, five in a box. If they bring all five, I've got plenty of protection, which he does. It's six on five. And the crosser, uh, Wally, is beating his man Okay, by one step. Now, it's not a terrible job by this defender closing because here's one. If Will Rogers, he's letting the ball go on time. If he is not accurate right here, if this ball is on his back shoulder, makes him have to kind of stop to catch the ball, this defender is going to clean his clock and have a chance to stop him, maybe tackle him short of the first down stick. If the ball's high, it could be a bat away, a tip up, a pick. But if you hit this thing on a dead run right in his gut, this gap, even though it's a small gap between defender and receiver, he's going to be able to catch it without stopping and turn up and at least make the first down and maybe more. This is a very accurate throw on a short route, which is harder to do than you think. See that right there? I mean, there's where he puts the football. Wally does not have to turn around. It's not on his back shoulder. It's not high. He doesn't have to jump. His feet never come off the ground, and he just pulls it right in on, in that gut. You can't make a more accurate throw, and it's very important because – like I said, it's pretty tight. He's beating him in man-to-man, -man, but if I make him stop his momentum, the defender is going to slam into him, and we either get a breakup or we barely make a first down. Because of a deadly accurate throw, it's now a turn up. Okay? I'm running away from an arm tackle, and it's my speed versus your speed, and there's a reason Wally is what he is. It turns into a big play. One thing Rogers seems to have going for him is – He's a leader. He seems to be a natural leader. That develops over time. He's still young, so you know you got to see if that takes. But he seems to be a leader. Rodgers had three touchdowns uh, against Ole Miss in the Egg Bowl. Let's take a look at those. Uh, the first one, uh, that slant, he puts it up, and that's a very intentional move there, throwing it high to allow a guy to jump and go get the football. You can kind of see what the read is is looking like for him right here. He knows, you know, I'm going to get deep slant back of the end zone. Um, and then I'm going to go underneath, have that underneath option with a route from the running back. As the play gets started, his eyes are in the right place. He's reading defenders. Is it one-on-one -on -one to the outside? And it is. And what he's got is the guy's going to try to get underneath and, and run down this running back thinking, okay, if he gets the ball, i got to make the tackle. That is, if he flips and throws it to the running back, it's going to be that first um, – defender inside of the corner I, I don't know personnel for them it's either linebacker safety it could be a safety but that's a guy who would have to run down this linebacker right here and so uh, i'm sorry running back and with it with an in break coming behind it and so uh, i think what rogers is doing is i think he is actually looking and eyeballing that underneath defender if, if he's going to run out then i'm throwing it up for my guy to make a play in the end zone and that's what happens right there. And it's a pretty good recovery. Um, it's not a guess. I mean, you know, that defender is giving the quarterback the look that I'm sprinting outside of that running back. And But at the timing that he lets the ball go, that defender actually stops. It ain't a bad job at all. He actually stops and reacts to the football and thinking, you know, I'm not going to continue out here just because I was going that way to begin with. I'm going to try to make a play on the ball. But because Rodgers put it up, you know, he didn't try to drill it in here on a knee and it'd be a pick and a breakup because he threw it up in the air, trust his receiver, and Heath goes and makes a play for a touchdown. 
Uh, another crossing route later to Heath, and this time he gets lost against man-to-man, -man, just, just totally runs away. What happened is on the release, Wally sort of uh, has a physical release against this defender, locks him up so nobody can, can sit here to kind of, you know, wall that crossing route off. And the corner on the outside is running with a uh, receiver on the backside. So once you get that free release underneath, there's just nobody there. We're back now to that accurate throw underneath where he doesn't have to slow up or stop. And he makes a play. Okay, and his third touchdown against Ole Miss is another uh, route against man-to-man. -man. It's man-to-man -man across the board, but the second receiver inside, the three receiver sides go in this shallow slant. And you're looking to see if you get sort of that pick action going on where a receiver inside is kind of going off of his hip. And you're hoping maybe that this defender gets picked a little bit. He really doesn't, but the timing is good on the throw. See right there, I mean, he doesn't really get the pick, but the timing is good on the throw, and there's a route open to the inside, right? Like there's nobody underneath. You've got one defender here who could drop and possibly get underneath and bat it down. you got one defender on top who, if the throw's late, uh, could blow it up, or if it gets tipped, he could pick it off. So there's another example of Rodgers who's getting the ball out on time quickly, making a quick decision here, and it's accurate to a guy who's going to be in, you know, tight space. Inside shoulder. And now this is just an excellent job by the receiver Williams to catch it and muscle his way into the end zone right there and not be arm tackled. You know, he set that Egg Bowl record with 440 passing yards. He was the first true freshman to start at quarterback in Mike Leach's 18-year career. So maybe it's just an anomaly because of the situation Leach walked into, but I think it really says something that Will was able to do that and play well. Okay, and so talking about timing and accuracy, um, it's not all perfect. Um, Will learned, and here's an example, that he learned against a great team in Alabama that, you know, it, it's, it's really difficult if you start putting the ball out there late as things develop and you're past sort of your window. It's only a three-man rush, but he gets it picked by coming back to a route very late. Um, you see him, he's sort of reading to his left side. Now, there's a three-man rush, and he's reading to his left side initially against a zone coverage. It's not a man-to-man, -man, it's zone coverage. You know, he wants that route out to the left, and what he has is outbreak here going to the boundary, vertical here up the sideline. But what he sees is that cover two safety is over the top. That's taking that away. And whether he's confused by it or not, I don't know. I just know that the ball doesn't come out right here. If he'd stayed eyes to the left, he's got a chance to, I think, drill this onto the stick over here because you got a defender who's falling back on a vertical route, and this one stayed inside. So if he'd stayed left, Austin Williams may give you a throw right on the boundary. Instead, he's now trying to come back. It's a little bit of an example of a young guy learning to trust that protection. Now, it's a three-man rush, and the problem is he didn't have much reason in this particular instance to, um, you know, to run out of there. Uh, his, his right tackle does get knocked off his feet, but it's a double team on him. Protection is pretty good. But when you hold the ball, you see him look left, look right, look back left, a little bit of confusion. i got to find a guy late, and when the ball comes out late, these great defenders are going to make plays. And so it's a zone defender who's jumped it inside and doesn't just jump it. But when you make late outside throws or late underneath throws and get it picked, it's bad news. And so um, a first-round draft pick takes it to the house, and he learns that. You learn that in your first few years playing in the SEC. Timing against zone, accuracy against man. And as that continues to grow with his knowledge of the offense and manipulating defenses, in this offense, Will Rogers has a chance to put up very big numbers. Thanks to Mississippi Land Bank for supporting these videos. Find them at mslandbank.com. Thanks to Farm Bureau Insurance across the state of Mississippi. Farm Bureau Insurance, check them out, favrates.com. And thanks to you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.